If you can't tell from many of my videos this year, I am just covered in smoke day in, day out here in Saskatoon. Now, I don't really live near the boreal forest, but the smoke from those fires does travel my direction. So the question becomes, how does this affect plants? And that's what we're gonna explore here in today's video to help you put some systems in place to hopefully ensure that you can still get a harvest if these forest fires continue into the future. And if this drought we currently have had for the last two years translates into a three or four year drought in the future. So the first question I always ask myself when there's big climatic events is, has it happened in the past? And the answer to this is yes. Around 2 million years ago, scientists do believe that fires were the cause of a mass extinction and ultimately that mass extinction was caused by lack of food. So essentially what happened is a volcano erupted, it spewed a ton of greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. This increased the world's temperature and we're from 8 to 12 degrees Celsius pretty much overnight. This increase in temperature obviously caused a drought this drought caused forest fires. These fires ultimately resulted in the destruction of forests or grasslands, whatever was around at that time. And the destruction of those plants resulted in a massive carbon capture system suddenly disappearing, just exasperating the issue. This lack of food and ability to cool or self-regulate the earth resulted in a mass extinction. Now, I'm not saying that this is a mass extinction event. However, what I am saying is that plants are affected by forest fires and not just in the sense of them being burnt up, but also in the sense of how the plants in my environment, my garden, are regulating this intensity of smoke day in, day out for an entire growing season. Historically, fires were super normal um, and incredibly explosive because there was nothing to calm the fire down, such as firefighters or mechanical manipulation of the land. So this lack of fire regulation back in the day meant the plants had to step up to the plate with evolution. And they developed mechanisms in which they can regenerate quickly after a forest fire has swept the land. Now, one thing plants didn't adapt to was the smoke or the atmospheric effects that come from forest fire environments. And that's where you're actually gonna come in to helping your plants get through a smoky forest fire environment. That's probably best if we start with the most obvious reason why this smoke is less than ideal, and that is the reduction of sun. The smoke ultimately puts up a film or a shade cloth over the sun. Now this affects photosynthesis, which is probably the most obvious thing it affects, but it actually also affects the temperature. So our days and nights tend to be a lot cooler than what it naturally would be if the sun was present or able to shine to its full ability. This may be beneficial in some cases because there's lots of billionaires out there, Bill Gates being one of them, that thinks shooting stuff into the atmosphere to block out the sun would help with global warming, which I mean, technically it is, <laughs> that's what we're seeing here where I am, but ultimately the, the shading of the sun reduces photosynthesis and ultimately affects the plant's ability to produce the byproduct of which we eat, which is fruits or vegetables or root veg or whatever the case is, and also affects um, the plant's ability to reproduce in the case of flowers or trees or something that we wouldn't necessarily consume, but something that we utilize in other ways. Now, one crazy study I looked at was done by Berkeley, and they said 20 minutes of heavy smoke in and of itself can reduce photosynthesis by 50%, which is crazy because that means that the plant is working at half mass. Now, if you've realized fewer flowers or fewer fruits or just plants that don't look as good, that's, that may be the reason why. If you've gone through a summer at 50% photosynthesis capacity, I mean, it's going to affect the yield of your plants. Now, unfortunately, you're not gonna be able to do anything to help with this cloud cover that's affecting the plants. Ultimately speaking, the only real solution would be to use grow lights outdoors, but I don't, I don't find that to be a solution. So that is one thing that we just kind of have to ride out when we have a season where we get ale out of smoke. Now, the second thing that actually affects plants is the particulate matter 
that's inside of the smoke itself. So the smoke we can see, and we often have warnings that tell us not to be outside. Like right now there's an extreme warning where I probably shouldn't be outside filming, but here we are. <laughs> the reason why those inhalation warnings come out is because we don't want to breathe what we're seeing in the air. But unfortunately the plants don't have a choice and they have to breathe it. And this breathing process is done by the stomata. Now the stomata is affected in two ways. Number one, it's uptaking ozone, which is oxygen duplicated three times, O3. And this ozone has to be detoxed from the plant, if you will, in the sense that the plant can't readily use this uh, poison. It actually has to break it down. Now, if the plant's working on breaking down and metabolizing components that isn't necessarily meant to be absorbed to the stomata in very high density, then it's not photosynthesizing or it's taking away from other processes that need to take place to produce foliage or fruit or flower, whatever the case may be. So that's number one. Now, number two way that the stomata is affected by this particulate in the air is the actual clogging up of that stomata. So similar to how our lungs eventually just inhale too much smoke and tend to burn and get a cough, like my whole summer of filming YouTube videos, plants are the same. So their stomata are sucking up, if you will, the particulates in the air and eventually that gets clogged. Now the clogging of the stomata reduces their ability to uptake CO2 and expire or respirate out O2. And again, this affects photosynthesis, the ability to carbon capture. And you can see how, while the plants are not affected by the forest fire, they're affected by the byproduct of it, which is smoke. This will decrease yields and all that fun stuff. So what can you do? to help make sure that you still have your garden food supply, but also help the plants that do exist in your garden. Well, the first answer to that is actually spraying off the leaves. Now, this seems silly considering how small this particulate size is, but it could help to an extent. Now, of course, disease will exponentially go up whenever we have moisture on leaves, but it's kind of, you pick your, you choose your evil in this case. So the use of water, pouring down on the leaves will actually help to wash a lot of the particulate off. In particular, the particulate not necessarily affecting the stomata, but affecting the plant's ability to photosynthesize due to just the, the grime that comes on top. Think of a smoker who's smoking in their car and then they have that kind of film on the windows um, and in the vehicle in general. That film is on the plants. And so the idea here is to wash that off as needed. Now, the second thing you can do is start indoor gardening. <laughs> and this is not intimidating. This is incredibly easy. I'm gonna do a ton of videos on that this year just to help you guys reduce your grocery bill when it comes to fresh eats. But don't be intimidated by this. Uh, the setup does not need to be extreme at all. I'm going to do things in just buckets uh, or protein containers like I did last year with the cracky method. I have a video on that. You name it, I've used my fish tank, all that sort of stuff to grow veggies and it works wonderfully. So definitely something to think about there. But I hope this helps you guys out. Yes, forest fires, unfortunately, while they don't affect the immediate vicinity you're in, in all the time, and I'm praying for all of you who are affected by this physically, I can I could not imagine. Um, God bless you guys. I just that's horrible. I just I cannot imagine that. But if you're affected by the byproduct, which again not nearly as heart wrenching as what people are going through right now, not much you can do either, <laughs> other than maybe water your leaves a bit. <laughs> Anyways, I want to thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button and I will talk to you plant nerds next time. See ya.